Welcome everyone to a new tutorial. Today's project will be working on the beautiful blues and iridescent greens of peacock feathers. I've always wanted to do one on a stone and just couldn't figure out how to do all these feathery filigree things on a stone and, and make it so it was easy enough for beginners to try. So I finally came up with a design that I think will work and even if you're new to dotting I think you'll be able to get a good result. So what I did was I looked at some pictures of feathers and I just picked out some colors that were pretty similar to the tones I was seeing, these wonderful jewel tones of blue and green and purple and lime green and then some bronzy goldish iridescent colors for the outside of the feathers. So I'm going to mix some copper and some gold to get kind of a bronze tone. So I'm just going to set the paints aside and um, oh yeah I was going to use this darker blue for the inside and my golden fluid acrylics all of those will be listed in the comments so you can see what I'm using use your own paints you don't have to use what I use I'm just kind of showing you what I've got on hand so I'm starting with one of these wonderful silicone molds from Angela at the Happy Dotting Company. Thank you Angela I love your molds and she has all kinds of sizes and shapes and she also has recipes so you can make just one stone or you can make a lot. So you just use your casting material, you mix it with water, tap the sides of the mold and let it sit overnight and it comes out with this nice stone. And it's got a raised center so you can use that to find the center of your grid design for your mandala. The stone I'm using is about four inches, a little less than four inches across. So that'll give you an idea of what I'm starting with. And you could certainly use your own stones or a, a, even a piece of paper to try this design. I'm also using uh, one of Angela's wonderful silicone um, stencils. But if you don't have one, you could just use a piece of paper. Just cut out a circle and fold it into fourths and then cut off the tip and cut off the edges. And it will give you little notches where you can fill that in with a charcoal white pencil and then connect those with lines to get your grid. But I'm going to use Angela's stencil today because it's such a wonderful tool. I use it every day and I, I really like it and I recommend it. So I've got eight grid lines on my stone and I'm using tools from Mark's Mandalas today. You can get these on Amazon. Wonderful plastic tools pointy q-tips because I always have mistakes. Mistakes are just part of learning. And some round toothpicks, my glasses of course. I'm going to be using a six well paint palette today. I just need a small one. And my wet paper towels. So I'm going to combine two metallic paints to create the bronze. I'm using the golden fluid iridescent fine gold, which is my favorite gold paint, and then some Martha Stewart copper. I'm going to mix those together to create this kind of bronzy metallic look and tap the palette to release the air bubbles. So here's some bright lime green. This was a new bottle. I just kind of opened it. It was a little thin, but I thought I'd try it anyway. So for my center size dot, I'm using tool number 15 with the bronze and just placing that center dot trying to line it up as best I can with the center of the stone. It's kind of hard to do because you can't see the center because your tools are over the top. And then I placed little tiny dots on each of the guidelines in the lime green. Now I'm switching over to tool number eight to place um, a little bit larger dots on the guidelines again but something weird was happening with that green paint it just wasn't releasing from the tool and it wasn't giving me good dots and it just was too thin it just wasn't working right so I took those off with my q-tip and switched to a different brand that was a little bit thicker and it worked perfectly it it held to my tool um, it created perfect dots with clean edges and I just stuck with that paint the rest of the way through So now I'm switching over to tool 9 for the next row of bronze dots. 
And I just made three of them, and then I'm going to use my toothpick to drag that into a teardrop shape toward the center of the design. Just kind of hugging the edge of those green dots and dragging that up. You can practice on a piece of paper if you don't want to try this first off on a stone. It might be good to do that just to be sure of how your paint is going to behave. Because every paint is a little bit different. So I did my first row and now I'm switching to tool number 10 uh, to make another row slightly bigger. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space there because I know I'm going to have to drag that dot toward the center. So I'm leaving some space to do that. Just so I can get it into that teardrop shape. And I only do three at a time because right now my house is pretty hot and pretty dry and these acrylic paints were thickening up very quickly so I wanted to just do three at a time to make sure I could drag that paint. I'm going to do the next three, kind of speeding it up here for you a little bit. And then the final two. So now I've got two rows of those bronze teardrops. Moving up to tool number 13 to repeat the same process. I'm just creating rows of feathers. It's the wonderful thing about those peacock feathers, how they fan out. They're just so symmetrical and they're that wonderful teardrop shape and then once you get the top dots on it really starts to to look like an eye almost okay now we've got another row I'm going to use the same tool to repeat and do another row again leaving space so I can drag that up into a teardrop shape This is really easy to do. I think even beginners could do this, especially if you make the art stone because they're so smooth. You can really uh, drag the paint on it very easily and get a nice result. All right, there's another row. And I'm going to add my medium green now. I'll be using that a little bit later. And I'm switching over to tool D. Mark has uh, some tools that have alphabet letters on them instead of numbers. So I'm using tool D to create a lime dot at the end of the short bronze row, right in the center, the bottom edge of the short bronze row. There, now you can see a little better. That green just really pops on that black background, doesn't it? Okay, did that all the way around. Now using tool A to place smaller lime green dots on either side. Now use a toothpick to walk medium green dots all around the bronze tier. This will probably be a little difficult for beginners, walking dots with a toothpick around another object, but again, if you could practice on a piece of paper, I think you'll be able to do it. It's almost like coloring or outlining. You're just following the edge and they will get smaller as you walk them out because you're you're losing paint right so the the dots are getting smaller as you work toward the top and you should be able to fit that in there so that was our first row now we're going to repeat these steps only going on the longer row of the bronze teardrops so we're starting to get to the edge of the stone we do the three dots on the bottom edge and then walk up 
with that toothpick. It'll be a tight fit and if you don't have enough room just go as far as you can walking those up. Doesn't have to be perfect that's the wonderful thing about these designs and these tiny dots. It's more of what it the impression you get when you stand back and look at it. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And you know what we're doing with dot painting anyway is really kind of an impression. We're not doing an exact copy of a feather or a flower. We're trying to create an impression of that by using color combinations and these dots. It's almost to create a feeling to where you show it to somebody and you say, what does that make you think of? Or what does that make you feel like? Okay, we need to walk a final row of green dots, but we need to raise the stone in order to get to that edge. You could just set it on top of a roll of tape or a glass or a coffee mug. Um, I used the bottom of the mold that I used to create the stone, and it worked just fine. Just got it up about, you know, an inch and a half up off the table so I could work on that outside edge and walk another row of green dots. Using tool number six to do those. Wrapping the edges of the stone is always a little challenging for beginners, but this is how you do it. If you can raise it up a little bit and you have paint that's thick like yogurt, it will stick to the side of the rock and you can do it. Moving up a size on that medium green, and I can't go very far with this, so I'm just going as far as I can. Like I said, just kind of connecting it to the green on the interior. So it kind of creates a, a fluid flow of color. It's just the bottom edge of the, uh, the impression of a feather that we're doing. And it just makes a night outside lines for the year mandala. Okay, now we're switching to tool number eight and putting a larger lime green dot at the end of the short row of the bronze. This is just to fill in space with that beautiful bright lime green. And then I'm going to use tool D to add a very small dot at the very end of that. And I'll lift up the stone so you can see. And then I used tool number five to place medium green top dots on the center row of lime dots. Now my paint had been sitting out for several hours at this point, so it had thickened up and um, it ended up making the top dots pretty plump because <laughs> they were really thick, but I liked it. I like that effect. So now we're going to mix up some blues for top dots. I want bright blue and a teal blue. So I added blue paint to the medium green that I used previously to make the teal. And then I added some of this turquoise uh, color flash iridescent paint to give the top dots some sheen. I also added a drop of follow blue green shade to each of the paints to boost the pigment saturation. So I wanted this to be almost a jewel tone, vibrant tone on, on top of the, the bronze. So now we're going to offset some of the top dots. The first row of bronze, we're going to use the teal. And we're going to place the top dot at the bottom of that teardrop. You're still going to see the bottom edge of the gold, that, that bronzy color, but it will be kind of sitting in the bottom of that. And then I'm going to be switching to the blue to go on to the next row. A little larger tool, again, setting that, <clears throat> that dot in the bottom edge of the teardrop. And I'm actually doing two rows now. It's finally starting to get that peacock feather look with that wonderful bright blue. It's so rich against that bronze background.
So now I'm going to add a drop of white to the bright blue to lighten up the tone a little bit to do that final row of uh, teardrop feathers at the bottom of the stone. And I moved up to a size 10 tool. So a little bit lighter. Again, just going to set that in, kind of offsetting it on the bottom edge of the teardrop, making sure that there's still a gold rim around that blue dot. So I want the gold to show. It's kind of a frame for the blue dot. And now I'm using a small tool to add a small light blue top dot to the top part of each feather, right in where it starts to point up into the teardrop shape. There's just enough room to put in a small blue dot. And I did that to all of the, the blue petals. So I'm going to let this dry completely and I'll mix up some of my dark blue and purple for the final top dots. My favorite cobalt blue is this very thick acrylic, so I add the purple color flash to it, and I'm also going to add a little bit of pouring medium, I think, to get, mix that up. And I found this wonderful neon purple. Ooh, neon purple is hard to find because uh, they, they like to darken up and they just don't stay bright, but this one I think works really well. So I'm mixing up my blue and my purple, and I'm going to use tool number 11 to do a dark cobalt blue top dot in the middle of the stone. And then I'm using my small little manicure stylus with the, the ball end, and I'm placing that blue top dot again at the bottom edge of the blue dot, and this is sort of creating that eye look of a peacock feather. Really like this this dark cobalt blue. Just a little bit of a, a shimmer to it. So I'm doing that on all of the medium blue and then I'm going to switch to the purple for that bottom row. And oh is that going to bring this whole thing to life the wonderful contrast of the, the light blue with that rich iridescent purple really gives you the feeling of a peacock feather. There it is. I looked at it and I thought it needed a little bit of a little tiny purple top dot there and then I added a few medium green micro dots around the center just to fill in some space. You don't have to do that. I just figured I'd, I'd, I'd fill up a little space and I liked it. So we're gonna let this dry completely and then remove any remaining guidelines with a wet Q-tip. It should come right off. And then seal it with a clear acrylic spray. And this is the result. Isn't that pretty? I just think it's a lovely little thing and really not too hard to do. I also did this on a natural stone that was a little bit smaller, so my feathers were a little tighter together. I just wanted to show you the difference. I really appreciate everybody waiting for this tutorial while I was getting through my surgery and uh, I just thank everybody for watching. God bless and keep you. Goodbye.